ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in tonight, Carol Simpson. Good evening. We begin tonight with an anniversary whose commemoration makes the Soviet Union very uneasy. On this date in 1939, Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin carved up Eastern Europe. Today, two million residents of the Baltic states linked hands to protest not only what happened 50 years ago, but to send a message of defiance to Moscow today. Here's ABC's Jim Laurie. A human chain of protest. In Tallinn, the Estonian capital, hundreds of thousands turned out to mourn what they see as their loss of independence 50 years ago today. Using radio broadcasts to coordinate their chain, people all across the Baltic states formed a line for nearly 400 miles. It stretched from Estonia through Latvia to Lithuania. There were freedom songs, in tears among those who remembered when the Baltics were free, and signs. We used to be, you know, free country, and that's what we are fight for. And we will fight, not with the guns or aeroplanes or bombs, but we fight for our freedom. What people here now demand is that Moscow repeal the deal signed so long ago between Stalin and the Nazis. They want complete independence from Moscow. They want to run their own economy, their own society. While Moscow has now moved to denounce the 1939 pact as immoral, it says it makes no difference to the status of the Baltics now. They want uh, to keep us in the Union at any cost. Uh, they don't want to let us go. This anniversary has served to embolden the independence movement to present yet another challenge to Mikhail Gorbachev. Yet a Soviet TV commentary tonight made it plain real independence is not an option. Mutual trust and negotiations, say the Soviets, are the answer. History must not aggravate the events of today. Jim Laurie, ABC News, Moscow. The non-aggression pact signed 50 years ago changed the face not only of Europe, but of the world. The pact between Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin freed Hitler to go to war in the West, while Stalin expanded his empire in the East. 50 years ago today, the German foreign minister von Ribbentrop boarded a plane to Moscow. His mission, to sign an agreement with his Soviet counterpart, Foreign Minister Molotov, that the two nations would not make war on each other. The Soviet leader Stalin was ecstatic, perhaps because of another more ominous agreement between the two countries. These scribbled signatures, Stalin and Ribbentrop, set forth a secret deal between Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia that would redraw the map of Eastern Europe. Hitler would take the western half of Poland. Germany, in turn, would look away as Russia took eastern Poland and took back the Baltic states. Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, states it had lost after the Russian Revolution. September 1, 1939, German forces launched a savage attack across Poland's western frontier. 28 days later, Warsaw was firmly in Hitler's grasp. In late October, these first Soviet shots earmarked the invasion of Estonia. Latvia and Lithuania would soon be Stalin's as well. For the Baltic states in Poland, the wounds of war ran deep. And after 50 years, the scars are still there. In Poland today, Solidarity and Communist members of Parliament unanimously condemned the old Soviet-German pact as shameful. Solidarity and the Communists also appear closer to agreement on who will do what in a new government. ABC's Jim Hickey is in Warsaw. Poland's army and security forces will remain in the hands of the communists. That is a reality the new Solidarity Prime Minister designate cannot ignore. This morning, Tadeusz Matzewiecki said he has assurances from Communist President Jaruzelski that the armed forces will cooperate with the new coalition government. But in return, he said, the Communist Party, now in opposition, must have more than just the two cabinet posts already offered it. Matsuvietsky warned a Solidarity Caucus meeting that with Solidarity's rise to power, there is a feeling of danger within the armed forces which must not be aggravated. He said they have no choice but to bring communists into the government because of what might happen if they don't. 
telling his colleagues there is no opposition in the world which controls the army and remains the opposition. The new communist partners, he said, must not be treated like secondary partners. That would be a trap for the country, not to mention angering Poland's Soviet neighbors. Indeed, in the phone call to this man, the Communist Party leader last night, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev warned that Poland's problems cannot be solved if the party is not included. Tonight, the Polish parliament adjourned without voting on Matsiewicz's appointment as prime minister. That is expected tomorrow. By this time next week, he wants the new government formed, the reshaping of Poland's balance of power completed. Jim Hickey, ABC News, Warsaw. In a moment, new drug raids and arrests in Colombia. And later in the broadcast, drugs in the workplace are on the...